Hello, everyone. Welcome to Predator's Papers. My name is Patricia Bailey, and this is the 55th discussion in our series, and is titled, Josephus, They Did Not Repent. You can find this two-page printable fact sheet at preterspapers.com. At the top of this page, we cite the repeated phrase in Revelation, they did not repent, and find similar repeated phrases in Josephus, the words of the Jews, pertaining to the zealots. In this paper, we list excerpts from Josephus in chronological order to document the zealots' impenitent spirit. These excerpts span the five-month duration of the siege of Jerusalem in AD 70. Number one. The zealots were inflated after an early modest victory driving the Romans out of Jerusalem. Due to their delusional state, they believed they were just too formidable for the Roman army and the city would never be taken. Number two, the zealot philosophy was based on the determination to have only Yahweh rule over them, but their actions were contrary to God's law and to faith. To Josephus, the zealots appeared to be in competition to exceed each other in depravity. We believe zealotry was the mystery of lawlessness Paul alluded to in 2 Thessalonians 2. Number three, the people of Jerusalem were barred from leaving the city and were killed and imprisoned by the zealots. Josephus stated the zealots were, quote, incapable of repenting, unquote. Number four, when the people of the city resorted to eating cow dung for lack of food, the Roman soldiers were sympathetic from afar, But the rebels, who had burned the stores of grain, were indifferent. Their conscience was seared. They, quote, did not repent, unquote. Number five, the zealots foolishly regarded Roman offers of peace as due to their fear of the zealots. The offers were actually due to Titus' desire to save a wonder of the ancient world, the magnificent Jerusalem temple. Number six, Based on a prophecy, the rebels were under the delusion one of them would be the anointed ruler of the world. This is why they fought each other so fiercely, as well as fighting against the Romans. We believe the zealots were the ones who were suffering from the great delusion Paul alluded to in 2 Thessalonians 2. Number 7. Speaking to the zealots, Titus enumerated the many concessions he willingly made to save their temple. He accused them of being such miscreants they couldn't even pretend to repent. The Romans who had the upper hand throughout the conflict were regarded by the zealots as trying to cut deals because they feared the zealots. Instead, the Romans were attempting to save a sacred marvel of engineering, the temple. Number eight. The zealots were so delusional regarding their captive condition when Titus told them they would be kept alive if they surrendered, they said they would only stop fighting if they were free to leave the city with no consequences. Number nine, the zealots were insolent and had total disregard for the death and destruction they had caused. Quote, they did not at all repent. Unquote. Number 10, Josephus continued to try to reason with the zealots, but they just laughed at him. Number 11, even when they were faint from lack of food and their ranks had dwindled, the rebels were so entrenched in evil, they continued to hunt down and kill their starving countrymen who were trying to flee the city to the Romans. Even though Josephus was a Jew and not knowledgeable of or sympathetic to Christianity, his work closely cooperates and explains John's apocalypse. When we understand those who did not repent were the rebel Jews in Revelation, it establishes the identity of the beast. In Revelation 16, the fifth bull of God's wrath caused darkness in the kingdom of the beast. The constituents of the kingdom of the beast were the unrepentant ones. Therefore, we must logically conclude the beast was a zealot-led first century Israel. Please see Preterist paper number 42, titled, Rome Was Not the Beast, and number 52, regarding the seven-member zealot dynasty. If you find this material of interest, please subscribe and share, as it enables a wider distribution of Preterist thought. Thank you for listening.